Hey, what's up? I am Patrice Covington, and you are watching Gospel Goodies TV. Gospel Goodies. Gospel Goodies. This is Gospel Goodies. Patrice Covington from Broadway to the music charts. Congratulations on your new song, My Favorite Things. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing good. I'm happy. Thanks for having me. For sure. Let's talk about your new song, My Favorite Things. What inspired you to create that or remake that for the holiday season? Yes, of course. You know, it literally is one of my favorite songs. Um, no pun intended there. I am a musical theater girl. It was my first love. And one of the first live plays I ever saw, musicals I ever saw, was The Sound of Music, which I think was just like a high school production of the show at the, at the high school my dad taught at. And um, I just remember the music being so beautiful and that led me to getting the VHS test tape. And then I was obsessed with the VHS and I wore it out. We played it all the time and the music just became a part of my home. And that song, I actually didn't even realize that it was a Christmas song until like kind of my adult life. Um, and I was like, hmm, I want to do a Christmas album one day. I've wanted to do a Christmas album for a long time. Still haven't done the album. There was the good but didn't get to finish that. But I was like, if I have one song that I could do as a single, it has to be my favorite things. And so here we are. So is the Christmas album coming now that you have the one single out? Well, now I have to, because I put it all the way out there. <laughs> but I do want to, I, I can't wait to do that. Sticking on your favorite things, what is your favorite part about the holidays? This year, it's it's so different for everybody. You know, I love getting, I don't get to see my family that much. I live 3,000 miles away. I'm born and raised in Virginia. Uh, and that's where everyone is on the East Coast. So I just love being able to see my family and, you know, create, do our traditions and create new memories. But this year, I'm actually going to have my first, like, planned Christmas, like I had a Friendsgiving. That was my first like planned Friendsgiving. I've been away because, you know, touring with Broadway shows, I've missed Christmases and Thanksgiving for all, all the time, but like never really by choice, you know, because I was working. So I'm looking forward to this year doing some new things with my friends over here in LA. What was your favorite Christmas gift back in the day? If you can remember. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure I have many, but one of them, you probably can relate. I feel like all girls can. Why was I so excited about a caboodle? Do you caboodle. remember a caboodle? Was like the no, you. I don't know. I don't know how old you are, but it was a. It was like a. This is ultimately a box to keep makeup or stuff in, but it came in like lots oh. of different. And they like open from the sides and stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why was I so excited about that? But I could not wait to get a caboodle. And I remember my caboodle was pink and purple and I loaded it up with makeup. I also really used to be obsessed with makeup too. Um, and that's probably where that started was from the caboodle. <laughs> See, I thought you were going to say like a microphone or like a keyboard that related to music. No, because you know what? Music was literally always in my house. We had pianos and microphones, I feel like from the day I came into this world. And yeah, I did get gifts like that, but you know, it's like when you give a baby a gift, they more excited about the wrapping paper than the actual gift. Yeah. I was like that. So I was like really, I remember also being excited about Easy Bake Oven oh, yeah. um, and the caboodle. <laughs> So you had music, you said you grew up around music. Um, did you always know you wanted to be a performer? I did, but I didn't really understand that I could really do it as like a living until about, um, I was in college already. Um, I went to college, like it was super important for me to go to an HBCU. I was like, um, a lot of my, I went to a performing arts high school and a lot of my friends went to conservatories in schools that, you know, really honed in on the arts. But I was like, do they have deltas? Um, do they have football games and bands? Like, you know, that was very important to me. And so um, I went to Hampton University and then a, about a year shy of what would have been my senior year, um, I was privileged to live in an area where we had a lot of entertainment uh, venues like the Spirit of Norfolk and also Bush Gardens where I could work and do those things during the summer. So I got to work with people who were living in New York and living this life that I was intrigued by. And I remember one summer, this is right before it would have been my senior year, and all my friends were like, 
to each other. They were like, see you in the city. And I was like, I want to go to the city. Like, what's the city? And so that's when I started. Literally, I would be in class and I would be audition, looking at auditions. And I asked my parents, I was like, you know, can I take a semester off um, to audition? And if I book something, then I'll work. And if I don't, then I'll go back to school in January. And I'm so blessed to be able to say that I have literally been working ever since. Um, I did finish school because it was very important to me, but I did it while I was on the road with Dream Girls and lots of other things. So my journey has been quite different. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's awesome. Your parents were supportive of it too. They were, they were, they knew. I mean, listen, my mom definitely had a moment where she was like, you don't need to go to school for the arts. You already know how to sing. You need a fallback plan. And yeah. then um, at Hampton University, I did a play. She told me, stay away from that drama department. My mom was kind of like Rita from Sister Act 2. <laughs> Until she saw, <laughs> like Rita's mama. Mm -hmm. And um, she saw me perform and I was literally singing a song about follow your heart, follow your dreams. My mom was like, all right, Patrice, well, you're good. So go ahead and just follow your heart, follow your dreams. And now she's like, number one, can't stay away from anything that I do. She's super proud and supportive mom. That's dope. Now, did, um, going to the HBCU and studying that, and do you think it enhanced your, your the arts of your career? Yeah, but in like a different way. Like it helped me be okay with being black in the arts. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of musicals that, you know, musicals were, were my first thing that I did in this in this industry. So there's a lot of musicals where it's like, you're the token black person, or you are either the token or you're like in a full black production. And so I just got to learn a lot about those and be okay being myself and being like true to myself in those shows where I might be the only one. You know, it gave me confidence. What would you say is the biggest difference between um, performing on stage and like recording in the studio? Oh, Leah, I get so shy in the studio. I really do. I really do. And I do. I'm getting better. <laughs> it's so different because on stage I have you know, lights and costumes and a wig and dancers and set pieces flying in. And then when you get in the studio, it's just you and that red light. You're like, okay. And it's usually just, you know, somebody else there who's listening very intently to everything that you're doing to make sure that you pull it off the way that they know you want to pull it off. Um, but it's, you know, and actually it should be less stress because you can literally delete it. When you perform live, like it's out there. It's already done. You did that. But um, yeah, it's just a bit of the opposite for me. I, I feel like the more I do it, the more comfortable I will be though. You're actually, are you in Atlanta right now filming? No, I'm back in LA. We just wrapped last, almost, almost two weeks ago. Okay. I just wrapped my first TV show as a series regular, which I'm really happy about. So can you tell us a bit about that? Um, it's Nat Geographic's uh, anthology series about Aretha Franklin? Yes. Um, Genius is a series that actually has been out for a while. This is their third season, but it is their first time featuring a woman and a black person. So history being made in itself right there. Really proud and honored to be a part of it. Um, I play Irma Franklin, who is Aretha Franklin's fabulous sister. Um, she also was a singer as well. All three of the sisters were singers. Um, Aretha had a machine behind her that the others didn't have, but also served as her background singer and her, just her, her support system for all things. Learned so much about the history of the Franklins and just like Aretha Franklin was so much more than a singer. She was truly an activist and a change maker. And her, mu her music is in the fabric of most of our lives. And so I loved learning how those songs came about and just the history behind it all. And she sang a few Christmas songs too, right? Yeah, she's got some Christmas songs. I mean, kind of like all the people back then, they had to do a little bit of Christmas. They had to cover all bases, but you know, gospel is her foundation. Um, mm -hmm. She started out, truly started out in the church and we start there in the show as when she's a little girl and how she started in the church, as did I. Oh wow, What's your, uh, what was your start in the church like? My dad was a minister of music, and so you know what that means. <laughs> I was in the church every day. I feel like I was at church literally every day, um, except for maybe like Friday, maybe. Um, choir rehearsals, Bible study, vacation Bible school, usher, board, I played the bells, and um, 
I also was in a Girl Scout troop that was from the church. So like I literally was there all the time. Um, and I had my first, you know, performance, so to speak, at church. Um, and I'll never, ever forget, like, you know, that's that's definitely my foundation in everything that I do on stage. It's so crazy, like, that whole serving in the church thing, how it plays out into real life, because um, you learn how to interact with people. Like you said, it was your first time performing on the stage, and now you're flourishing using these gifts God gave you in front of uh, the millions of people watching. So congrats to you and all that. Thank you. It's definitely um, all God dates for sure. So it's the holiday season. 2020 was definitely a wild year. But before we wrap, um, I want to know, I know you said you're spending it away from your family, so you might do the friends thing. But if you had one Christmas wish for this year, what would it be? Where's my man, Santa? <laughs> Where's my man? <laughs> Oh man. Remember him COVID free right here to my doorstep because otherwise I don't know how I'm gonna meet him. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? How are people meeting people? Girl. I think it happened too with COVID even happening, but I don't know. I don't know. If I found out, I'll let you know. <laughs> well, it's not I feel like it's not too late for that that Christmas wish to come through. So it's not, I believe. Thank you for believing that with me. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>